following scene is a reenactment of Perry versus Schwarzenegger, the Prop 8 trial heard in U.S. District Court. Brian Kendall is a gay man who works for the Denver Police Department and who was subjected to conversion therapy as a youth. He is a fact witness for the plaintiffs and is under direct examination by the plaintiff's lawyer, Ron Flynn. The plaintiffs in this case are two loving same-sex couples who simply want to marry, just as any heterosexual couple in America has the right to do. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kendall. Well, you were a child in Colorado Springs. Did you learn of the concept of gay people or homosexuality? Yes. I remember during the discussion about Amendment 2, during the Amendment 2 campaign, my parents would talk about homosexuals seeking special rights and how they were essentially evil people and how they felt threatened and how our family was threatened by homosexuals. At that time, did you know what a homosexual was? No, I didn't. Um, I just knew it was a big, long, scary word, and I found the whole concept very frightening. Uh, Mr. Kendall, uh, what is your sexual orientation? I'm a gay man. I'm a gay man. Did your parents know that you were gay? No, they did not. Did your parents ever find out that you were gay? Yes, when I was 13 years old. At one point, my parents discovered my journal. For the first time in that journal, I had admitted to myself that I was gay, and that I had actually written those words. And they found out, they found that, and read it. Do you remember anything that they said to you when they found the journal? Yes, I remember my mother looking at me and telling me that I was going to burn in hell. Did your parents later tell you anything else about being gay? After my parents found out, my home life changed a lot and my parents didn't take it very well. And I remember my mother calling me names. I remember before this all started, I had the kind of parents who would drive me to school and make my lunches and write notes and put them in my lunch. And after this, they were always yelling at me. They were calling me names. Um, and they were just telling me really horrible things. My mother would tell me that she hated me, or that I was disgusting, or that I was repulsive. Once she told me that she wished she'd had an abortion instead of a gay son. She told me that she wished I had been born with Down syndrome. This is very emotional to read out loud, actually. <laughs> or I had been mentally retarded, things like that. When I was 16, I separated myself from my family. I surrendered myself to the Department of Human Services in Colorado Springs. And what happened when you surrendered yourself to that department? <laughs> I, I went in and I spoke with the caseworker and I told her what had been going on in my family, what was going on with reversal therapy. My parents had been referred by Focus on the Family to another organization called NARF. What is Focus on the Family? Focus on the Family is a Christian family ministry based in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where I grew up. And what is NARF? NARF stands for the National Association for Reparative Therapy of Homosexuality. It's a reversal therapy organization based in Encino, California. I remember the therapist telling me that homosexuality was inconsistent with Christian teaching and that my parents didn't want me to be gay and I needed to change and that homosexuals were bad people. Were you given any advice on how you would be able to suppress your homosexuality in these therapy sessions? I remember it was a general admonishment, but not a specific technique, no. Was the therapy successful? And by that, I mean, did it reach its goal of making you heterosexual? No, I was still gay. I knew I was gay, just like I knew I'm short and I'm half Hispanic and I just never thought that those facts would change. At NARTH, I was being told that I had to reject who I was at the most fundamental level because what that was was dirty and bad. While I reconciled my faith, faith with my identity, the therapy I went to at NARTH played no role in that. I reconciled my faith with my identity. The therapy I went to at NARTH played no role in that. So did you stop living with your parents? stop going to therapy? And I realized at one point that if I didn't stop going, I wasn't going to survive. What do you mean by that? Um, I would have probably killed myself. I separated myself from my family and surrendered myself to the Department of Human Services in Colorado Springs. I was a 16-year-old kid who had just lost everything he ever knew. I didn't really know what to do. I was very lost, 
And so the next few years I wandered in and out of drugs. I wandered in and out of attempts at school. I was incredibly suicidal and depressed. I hated my entire life. At one point I turned to drugs as an escape from reality because I was, you know, trying to kill myself. So now things did not get better. How long did this period last? Four or five years. During this period, were you able to support yourself? It was a struggle for survival. I wasn't able to support myself. Did you rely on any public benefits or anything like that during this period? Um, well, when my health care ran out, you know, I had to go to emergency rooms to get medical care. And the only counseling I could get were through state schools because I couldn't afford anything else. Mr. Kendall, you told us that you now work for the Denver Police Department, correct? That's correct. How long have you done that? Over two years. So it would be fair to say that you're now, that you're able to support yourself and you're stable. Yes. It's been a long, hard journey. But I have fought with every bit of myself to take care of myself, to get a good job, to get some place to live. And I've been able to do that.